before we get on with joining, I just want to talk a little bit about blocking. This is completely optional for this project, but if you find any of your squares looking a little bit ruffled, then this will definitely help to straighten them out before you join them together. I use um, a little bit of steam. Just give them a blast of steam from a steam iron and then you can just encourage the squares into shape. I'm not really pulling um, or tugging or stretching them. I'm just um, encouraging the corners to be square and the edges to be straight. Keep your iron a few centimetres above your squares. Don't let the iron touch the yarn at all. It's really quick to do and will make a huge difference to the appearance of your finished squares before joining. Excuse me, Nala. I've got my squares ready to join and in the pattern it says we're going to join the squares in four vertical strips. This just makes them easier to manage rather than having a, a huge great thing with joins all over the place. So um, this is the bottom left hand corner of the blanket and these are the first three squares and we're going to join them with a double crochet join on the back. And I find it easier to do the horizontal joins first. So I'm just going to move this one out of the way and we're going to join the tulip to its stem. And if we just have a look at the stitch count for this, we've got 13 stitches on each side of the square and two corner spaces. So we will have 15 double crochet across to join. So we're going to place them face to face. So right sides facing each other and I've got my joining yarn and I'm going to just pop my hook into the corner space of the first square and the corner space of the second square. Pull up a loop and just to hold that in place, I'm going to crochet over both the tail and the arm from the ball. So we get the tail out of the way. And now we're going to double crochet in the 14 remaining stitches. So hook in the first stitch. And this first stitch on the underside square is, is the tricky one to see. It's this first stitch in the corner. So you can see the, the two V's of the stitch on the top. It's that little stitch we talked about before that likes to hide. So I'm going to pop my hook into that one, pull up a loop and double crochet. And then the next stitch and the corresponding stitch underneath. And once you've got the first couple of stitches in place, it's really easy to just whiz along. And I'm going through all of the loops of the stitch, so both loops of both stitches. Try not to do this join too tightly. You want it to lay nice and flat and it will do that more easily if the stitches aren't too tight. So last stitch and then my final double crochet goes in both corner spaces. So the corner space of this square and of this one. And I said don't do it too tightly but this final um, stitch in the corner space you want to make sure that that's a little bit tighter than the others. It just gives a neat to finish. And then we can snip, open out and we have our two squares neatly joined together. So I'm ready to do my next join and I'm going to join this tall leaf to the two squares that we just joined. But before I do, I just want to talk about stitch count. 
So we've just joined our two squares, um, so that's 13 stitches and the two corner spaces, so we're counting the corner spaces for the purposes of joining, so that's 15 for each square. And then the stitch count for the tall leaves is 28 stitches on the side and two corner spaces, so that's 30. So we've got the same stitch count here. We've got our two corner spaces, 13 stitches, two corner spaces, and each corner space will be joined to its own stitch, and then 13 more stitches and a corner space, so that's 30 in total. So I'm going to join all my squares from right to left and from bottom to top. This just gives it a nice neat finish on the back because all the joins are facing in the same direction, but I'll show you that later when we're finishing off. So place face to face. I'm going to start at the bottom. So I'm going to take this side and then I'm going to get my yarn and join in exactly the same way as I did before. So into the corner spaces. and then first stitch and then careful to make sure that you get that first stitch the little one that likes to hide so there's my first stitch so I'm approaching this join now so we've got our two corner spaces here and each one is going to have its own stitch So into here and then into the corner space and then into the next stitch and into the next corner space and then I'm just going to continue along the rest of the join. This is my final stitch into the corner space. Fasten off. And there are my first three squares joined together. So these are my next two squares that I need to join. So I'm going to join here first and then I'm going to join the horizontal join and in the pattern I've suggested where to put all of your joins just to make it easier for you to follow. So this will be a nice easy join because the sides of the squares and the corner spaces will all marry up and then the next join will be a leaf and then this will be the same as this joint. So you will have two short sides joining to a long side. So remember that each corner space has its own stitch. This is my next join and I'm just going to give you a little tip if you're finding it hard to get these stitches to match up. I'm going to use some stitch markers and I'm just going to pop the stitch marker in the corner space and the corresponding corner space on the other square um, and then I'm going to use another stitch marker to mark where these centre stitches go so these two corner space stitches so I'm going to count so the corner space and then one two three four five six seven eight nine 10, 11, 12, 13. So those 13 stitches correspond with the 13 stitches along the side of this square. So I know that the next stitch, which is this one, is going to be the corner space. So I'm just going to pop 
another stitch marker into there. And then I pop my sides together. And then I'm ready to join. And I know that when I get to here, I'll have done the right amount of stitches. I'm coming up to my stitch marker and everything marries up nicely. So I know that this stitch and the one with the stitch marker in, so we can take the stitch marker out now. I know I'm in the right place. And I also know that if I make my next stitch in the next corner space and carry on to the end, I know that these stitches will match up perfectly as well. That's my whole strip of squares joined now. Um, just remember to try and be consistent with your join direction. So I've done all of my joins from right to left and from bottom to top. If you're left handed, um, then you'll probably want to do them from left to right. If you prefer stitching your squares together, you can whip stitch them. That's absolutely fine. I just prefer to crochet things together. So. I've left my tails and I know I'm normally a fan of sewing the tails in but there is a reason for this and it will help you um, to get a neat finish on the back. So all I need to do now is join my other three strips and then I'm going to show you how to join them all together. I've already joined three of my vertical strips and I'm going to join this last strip to it now. Um, and it's just a case of joining them together in exactly the same way as you joined the individual squares. So it will be one continuous seam all the way up the blanket. And if you want to use your stitch markers this time just to marry up the places where the, the seams obviously join. So here we've got two horizontal seams. You could pop stitch markers in the corner spaces so you know that these are going to match up. We've got horizontal seams that match here so you can pop stitch markers in to make sure that these line up. It's entirely up to you but it just means that as you're working up the blanket you know that you're in the right place and if you've gone wrong somewhere you're not going to have to undo lots of stitches to correct it. You'll only have a, a small amount of stitches to correct because you've got your stitch markers in place but that's entirely up to you. So I'm going to start at the bottom, work up to the top in exactly the same way as before using my double crochet join. So I'm putting them face to face And I'm going to start in the corner space as I did before and work all the way along just making sure that those stitches line up with one another. So I've joined all of my vertical strips together and the last remaining task is to deal with these ends. Um, the advantage of being consistent with my joining direction of all of my pieces is that now all of the uh, joining seams are laying in the same direction. And if you, you're a quilter, you'll be familiar with this concept of nesting seams for a neat finish on the back of a quilt. And we can do exactly the same thing with crochet. And I'm just going to show you how to tidy up these ends and to nest them into the seams and sew in your tails at the same time. 
So I'm just going to thread my tail onto the needle and I'm going to take this end under the adjacent stitch in this seam. So I'm just pulling it through and you can see that it makes this stitch nest into this seam. And then I'm going to come down in the stitch next to it. Don't pull too tight so you distort anything. And then I'm just going to thread my needle under a few stitches. And then back the other way, just to secure it. And then snip off and those seams are now neatly nested together. So I'll just show you another one on the other side. So thread under the adjacent stitch. Down through the stitch next to it. And then under a few stitches. This is a bit awkward because I'm doing it flat on the, the desk, but you can pick it up obviously. And then back the other way, just to secure it. And there we go, nice and neatly nested. And you can just carry on doing this for all of your tails. And when you've sewn them all in, you'll have a nice tidy finish on the back as well as on the front. The first round of my border is double crochet and it uses the background colour and it's just to give a nice tidy finish to this edge. So I'm going to start in a corner, in a corner space, pull up a loop and one chain and this does not count as a stitch in the usual way. So one double crochet, two chains and one more double crochet to make the corner and then one double crochet stitch in each stitch around the blanket. So don't miss that cheeky corner one that likes to hide. And then one stitch in every stitch around. And when you reach a corner space, just make a double crochet in the corner space and then a double crochet in the one next to it and then carry on going. So every stitch and every corner space has a double crochet in it. And every corner has one double crochet, two chains and one double crochet to turn the corner. The next round of border is mini granny stitch. I've got my baby pink yarn and I'm using a 3.5 millimeter hook this time. It's very important that your border lays flat. Um, a 3.5 millimeter hook just makes it a little bit tighter and helps to stop it going wavy. So to do my mini granny stitch, I'm going to pull up a loop and chain two and this counts as our first half treble stitch and mini granny stitch is made up of pairs of half trebles so I'm going to do another half treble in the corner space and chain two and then two more half trebles and that completes my corner. And then I'm going to skip a stitch. So I'm going to skip this first stitch here and do two half trebles in the next stitch. So that's one. Oops. 
into and so on all the way round. So skip a stitch two half trebles skip a stitch two half trebles and so on and the corners will always be two half trebles two chains and two half trebles to turn the corner and we're going to work this round with the right side facing up and then the next round of the border which is exactly the same stitch worked in exactly the same way is going to be worked with right side down and the rounds of the border will alternate between right side up and right side down and it's really important that you turn it's really important that you turn your work over and work on opposite sides because this is going to keep your corners nice and square and stop them twisting. If you don't turn, you're going to end up with wonky ears. Um, and this turning really will prevent that and it will keep your border nice and square and flat and your edges straight. So here's round two of my border complete. I'm now going to flip it over. So the wrong side is facing up and I've got my lilac yarn and I'm going to start in a corner same as before pull up a loop chain two that counts as my first half treble and another half treble and then chain two and two more half trebles to complete the corner and this is exactly the same stitch as round two except this time we're going to work into the spaces between the stitches so I'm going to put my hook into the space between the stitches so I'm not going into the top of the stitch this time it's in this space here between the stitches and I'm going to make two half treble crochet in each space all the way around the blanket and at the corners it's two half trebles two chains two half trebles and then just continue all the way around and the next few rounds of the blanket are the same as this one just remember to flip over after each round to keep your blanket square here are the first nine rounds of my border complete so I've got round one in my background color and then two three four five six seven eight and nine in my pastel rainbow round ten is slightly different and I've got my candy pink yarn again for this round starts in the corner in the same way and I'm still using the 3.5 millimeter hook so I'm going to pull up a loop and this time I'm going to chain one and I'm going to make a double crochet and the chain one doesn't count as a stitch so double crochet in the corner and then chain two and another double crochet in the same space to form the corner and then I am going to chain one skip a stitch and then I'm going to double crochet in the space between stitches so double crochet here I've got the right side facing up for this so chain one and double crochet in the space and chain one and double crochet in the space and you're going to repeat this all the way around the blanket and at the corners you're going to double crochet chain two double crochet to make the corner I'm cheating now because it's late in the day and I want to film this before the light runs out but I've just got a little section of round 10 completed so I can show you how to start the next round um, 
So rounds 11 onwards are the same as rounds 2 to 9, but in reverse. So we're going to start with the pink and then we're going to go backwards, peach, yellow, green, etc. So we have these colours in reverse working outwards. Uh, so we're back to our mini granny stitch. So I've got my baby pink yarn and I'm just going to start in the corner with a chain two and that counts as my first half treble. So another half treble in the same space, chain two, half treble and another half treble and I've still got the right side facing up for this round. And then I'm going to make my two half trebles for my mini granny stitch in the chain space. So in the chain space between the stitches. I'm going to make my two half trebles and then just continue with my mini granny stitch. So no chains this time. Two half trebles in the next space and so on. I'm just going to work that all the way round. And then when I've completed this round, I'll turn it over. So we're back to turning over after each round and then I'll work my peach and so on until I get back to the baby pink. And then after I've completed, completed the baby pink round, I'll show you how to make the bobble border. I've worked to the end of round 19 of the border now. And round 19 is the same as round one. It's one double crochet in each stitch all the way around. And at the corners, it's one double crochet, two chains and one double crochet. And this is in the bright pink. So at the end you slip stitch to join in the usual way. And then I'm going to chain one and turn. So we are working on the back. So we've got the wrong side facing up this time. And this is the bobble edging. So when you turn over, you will have your one chain at this corner space. I'm going to make two slip stitches in the corner and then one slip stitch in the first double crochet. And then I'm going to make my bobble, so the first bobble of the bobble edging. And I'm going to make it in the same stitch as that last sl slip stitch. So to make your bobble, chain two, yarn over, insert your hook into that same stitch, pull up a loop, yarn over and pull through two loops and then again yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over and pull through two loops and then one more time yarn over, pull up a loop, pull through two loops and you will now have four loops on your hook and to complete the bobble yarn over and pull through all four loops on the hook. So there's your little bobble and I'm now going to do four slip stitches in the next four stitches. So in the next stitch from the bobble slip stitch, so that's one, two, three, four. And then we make another bubble, so chain two, and then into the bottom of that same stitch that the slip stitch is in, yarn over, pull through two loops, and we're doing this three times, so that's one, 
yarn over, pull through two loops, that's two, and then yarn over and pull through two loops, that's three, and then yarn over and pull through all four loops on the hook to finish the bobble. And then it's four slip stitches again in the next four stitches. And you're just going to repeat this all the way around the edge of the blanket. Now, when you reach a corner, always make two slip stitches in the corner space and then carry on with your bobbles. You may find that when you're coming up to a corner, you might have to adjust the number of slip stitches in between bobbles to make sure that you end on a corner with a bobble. So you might have to um, take out a slip stitch so you only have three sli slip stitches before the bobble. Um, it doesn't really matter. It, it won't make any difference to the appearance of the final blanket. It just means that you have slightly neater corners. That's the Scandi Meadow Blanket Complete. I really hope you enjoy making it and that you'll join me for more crochet soon.